Let us look into the microscopic features of lung in this video. I am grateful to Dr. Michael Horsch of University of Michigan Medical School for providing the images of histology sections. In the respiratory system, nose, pharynx and larynx form the upper respiratory tract while the trachea, bronchi and lungs form the lower respiratory tract. Lungs are a pair of essential organs of respiration located in the thoracic cavity. Trachea actually divides into two right and left principal bronchi and each principal bronchus in turn divides into lobar bronchi, usually three on the right side and two on the left. The lobar bronchi divide into segmental bronchi which are again most of the times 10 in number on the right side, 8 to 10 on the left side. These aerate one bronchopulmonary segment each. The segmental bronchi undergo several orders of division to form the smallest terminal bronchi. These terminal bronchi divide to form lobular bronchioles which aerate one secondary pulmonary lobule. They divide to form up to six terminal bronchioles. The terminal bronchioles divide into multiple respiratory bronchioles, each leading successively into alveolar ducts, atrium, alveolar sacs, which are made up of alveoli. The part distal to the terminal bronchiole is an SNS, which is a functional area of lung for gas exchange, and the part distal to the respiratory bronchiole is a primary lobule. Airway passage up to the level of principal bronchi is the extrapulmonary part, whereas from the lobar bronchi up to alveoli is the intrapulmonary part. Airway passage starting from the nose up to the level of terminal bronchiole forms the conducting zone, whereas airway passage starting from the respiratory bronchiole all the way to the alveoli form the respiratory zone, where actual gas exchange occurs. Throughout its length, Airway passage becomes progressively narrower, walls of the passage become progressively thinner and the lining epithelium becomes progressively flattened. A section of lung under low power magnification shows bronchi of various sizes, bronchioles, respiratory bronchiole, alveolar duct, atrium, alveolar sac, and numerous alveoli. We can also see section of pulmonary arteries accompanying bronchial tree and pulmonary veins between the alveoli. Lung is covered by serosa which is simple squamous mesothelium of visceral pleura and subserosal connective tissue. A section of lung usually shows presence of one or more bronchi of various sizes Bronchus can be identified by the presence of cartilage plates in its walls. From inside outward, the wall of the bronchus shows mucosa with lining epithelium and lamina propria, muscularis with smooth muscle, submucosa with zero mucus glands, hyaline cartilage plates and an outer layer of adventitia. Mucosa varies from pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium in larger bronchi to ciliated columnar epithelium in terminal bronchus. The smallest bronchi show folded mucosa resulting in vertical ridges, fewer cartilaginous plates and fewer serum mucus glands in the submucosa. Here we are also able to see a bronchial artery in the wall of the bronchus and accompanying pulmonary artery. Bronchioles differ from the bronchus in having no cartilage plates in their walls, no glands and a diameter of lumen which is less than 1 mm. They are lined by ciliated cuboidal epithelium and have circumferential smooth muscle in their wall. Here we are able to see a terminal bronchiole which forms the conducting part of the airway passage dividing to form the transitional zone that is respiratory bronchiole with pockets of alveoli in its wall shown by the arrow, which in turn branch to form the respiratory part of the passage, namely alveolar duct marked as AD, atrium marked as AT, alveolar sacs marked as AS, which show alveoli in their walls. Walls of the bronchi and as well as bronchioles are lined by 
at least six types of stationary cells and two types of migratory cells. The stationary cells are ciliated columnar cells which help in mucociliary rejection current, goblet cells which help in mucus secretion, clara cells which are the cuboidal non-ciliated cells with bulging apices and these help in secreting surfactant, brush cells which show stiff apical microvilli and they act as sensory receptors, basal cells which are small round cells which act as stem cells and lastly the neuroendocrine cells these are again the small round cells which have endocrine secretions. Two types of migratory cells are the occasional T lymphocytes and the mast cells with histamine granules. From bronchus to respiratory bronchiole the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium changes to non-ciliated cuboidal epithelium. Number of goblet cells decrease and the number of clara cells increase as we come towards the bronchiole. Wall of the alveoli are lined by type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. Type 1 pneumocytes are the squamous cells which are fewer in number but because of the larger size they occupy larger surface area. These cells help in gas exchange. Type 2 pneumocytes are the cuboidal cells with lamellar body in their cytoplasm. Although they are more in number, they occupy less surface area. They help secreting surfactant which reduces the surface tension and prevents collapse of the alveoli. Surfactant secreted by type 2 pneumocytes is different in composition from the surfactant secreted by the clara cells. Increase in the number of type 2 pneumocytes suggests alveolar injury and repair. A third type of cells are also found in the respiratory zone. These are the dust cells or macrophages which are found in the airspace of alveoli as shown here. They are also found in the connective tissue of the interalveolar septa. These cells phagocytose inhaled dust particles, hence they are named as dust cells. They also phagocytose RBCs from capillaries in congestive cardiac failure resulting in rusty sputum and they are also therefore called as heart failure cells. Airspace of two adjacent alveoli are separated by an interalveolar septum which is made up of connective tissue containing capillaries and macrophages between the two layers of alveolar epithelium. Scanning electron microscope has shown the presence of alveolar pores in the intraalveolar septum which allows for air circulation between the adjacent alveoli even if there is obstruction of airway in one of the alveolus. Blood air barrier is the barrier across which the gases must diffuse between the alveolus and the capillary. At places of gas exchange, blood air barrier is made of a thin portion as seen in the right hand picture here where the barrier between the air and the blood in the capillary are formed successively by a layer of surfactant, type 1 pneumocytes, basement membrane of the epithelium of the alveolus, basement membrane of the capillary and the endothelial cells. Here the two basement membranes are close to each other. On the other hand, blood air barrier is made of thick portion elsewhere as shown in the left side figure here. In addition to all the layers, variable amount of connective tissue fibers and cells intervene between the two basement membranes in case of thick portion of interalveolar septa. So quickly recollecting what we have seen so far, sections of lung shows both conducting and respiratory parts. While bronchi are identified by the cartilage plates in their walls, bronchioles have no cartilage plates and have smaller lumen. Lining epithelium of bronchi and bronchioles varies from pseudostratified ciliated columnar to non-ciliated simple cuboidal type with multiple cell types. Respiratory part is lined by type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. Between alveolus and the capillary in the intraalveolar septum, gases must diffuse across the blood-air barrier. Thank you. Hope you find this video useful. You can also visit this site for similar histology videos.